Good day to all who have gathered virtually to honor a great Virgin Islander, David Hamilton Jackson, and the momentous achievements of our forefathers and to charge ourselves as we move forward to do greater things. I wanna say thank you to the Grove Place Action Committee, which organizes an event year after year, never forgetting the achievements of great Virgin Islanders. I previously did this recording with the governor, Senate president, and others, but wanted to speak directly to you right now about my thoughts and feelings about today. D. Hamilton Jackson was relentless in his pursuit for the advancement of the Virgin Islands and its people. He knew that Virgin Islanders, in order to advance, needed to economically, politically, and socially be free, and that a free press was a must. He traveled to Denmark and successfully petitioned the Crown and received the repeal of a 1779 law which prohibited independent newspapers and enforced strict censorship on all publications in the territories. Upon returning home, he established the first free newspaper, The Herald. The date of this event, November 1st, is the reason for our celebration today and is celebrated as an annual public holiday known as Liberty Day, D. Hamilton Jackson Day, or Bull and Bread Day in the Virgin Islands of the United States. Along with organizing the island's first trade unions, following the transfer of the territory to American control in 1917, he lobbied for U.S. citizenship for Virgin Islanders. Our ancestors were willing to not just fight, but to die for the cause of equality and the dignity of living wages and fair working conditions. I recently watched a video on social media, which was a tremendous thought-provoking speech by my good friend, the Prime Minister of Barbados, the Honorable Mia Motley. In that speech, she extols the virtues of Caribbean people, discusses the social, economic, and psychological scourge of colonialism, and beseeches all of us to take off the cast of the barrier of small-mindedness and self-contempt. In that speech, Prime Minister Motley discusses the issues of believing that you come from a small place and that you in fact are small. Small island syndrome, that you are forgotten, that big things do not happen from where you come. It's interesting because fortunately, I was never raised nor have ever had that thought. I was brought up to believe that Virgin Islanders are indeed a mighty people, able to perform and to lead with greatness, that we come from a physically small location, but that the Caribbean and indeed the Americas would not be what they are today, but for us, but for Virgin Islanders, but for Caribbean people from the founding of places like San Francisco to excellence in sports, developments of theories of sociology, great rebellions and movements, and indeed the creation of the most profound legal document written by man, Virgin Islanders do that. Small Island Syndrome, I was taught to believe that that was not the case. But self-contempt, the self-contempt that Prime Minister Motley talked about that, we see it every day in the Virgin Islands. While our ancestors fought for the ability to have free speech and free press, many of us don't even vote. We have politicians who take it as a personal affront when colleagues, constituents, the press critique them. We as politicians bristle when people do not agree with us or attempt even to shut them down through our bully pulpit, our speeches, threats for against employment, and even sending out our own created trolls on social media. And on the other hand, we have individuals who don't follow the ethics or general rules of journalism and call what they write news. And there are self-proclaimed influencers, trolls, 
indeed regular citizens who have lost all sense of priority and decency, not solely critiquing policy, law, or officials' actions, but going after persons and families, stymieing public servants from being bold in policy and frightening so many from even entering public service at all. As a government, we show our self-contempt when we spend tens of thousands of dollars for fireworks for America's independence, the 4th of July, and the day of our own emancipation, the day Virgin Islanders liberated themselves, is met with silence. We show self-contempt when we continue to engage in large romantic celebrations of our transfer as property from one power to another and almost no politician shows up for grassroots events like contract day, fire burn. Indeed, we have created whole divisions of government to celebrate festival and carnival, of course, rightly recognizing the monetary engine those activities generate. But each year, the Grove Place Action Committee, which puts on D. Hamilton Jackson Day, must beg for money to honor our ability to have a free press and honoring our successful fight, individual men and women against sovereign nations. Denmark Vesey, Budo, the slaves of the St. John Rebellion, Queens of Fireburn, Queen Keziah of the Co-Workers' Strike, Edward Wilmot Blyden, Camille Passaro, Arturo Schomburg, Casper Holstein, William Leisdorf, Hubert Harrison, D. Hamilton Jackson. All Virgin Islanders from a small place doing enormous, tremendous, world-changing things. I continue to pray that we as Virgin Islanders remember our past. And that's why I'm speaking directly to you as well, to remember our past. That we as politicians prioritize those things that will cause our children to be truly self-aware of who they are and the greatness that lies within them. That those of us who are dis a Virgin Islands descendants and those who come and make the Virgin Islands their home will recognize the singular greatness of these islands. Not just a place, not just a space for your present well-being, but our islands, our mystical, majestical power for good throughout the world.